All right, today we're going to do the uh, Kung Fu Crab. We're going to start out here uh, first. We got two pieces of rabbit that I cut, um, maybe about two inches long at best. Uh, they don't need to be very long. You just want to make sure you got some rabbit hanging off the end here. We're going to start out taking a little bit of this uh, Deer Creek Sculpt. All we're going to do is just put a little bit on the end of this rabbit right here. And we're just going to kind of soak it in with our fingers. Just kind of make sure we get it nice and spread out right on the tip of this uh, rabbit hide. If a little gets on the hide, no big deal. You just want, don't want it going all the way back on the rabbit hide. As long as we got this one good, we'll take our uh, botkin. All we're going to do is just kind of find the center of the rabbit fur and just kind of split it with the botkin. Some going one way, some going the other way. This is just split it into a little claw like shape. So, let me see if I can get it with both my hands so you guys can actually see it without me blocking it too much. Alright, so now we got it into a little claw like shape. We'll just take that and we'll hit it with our uh, UV light. Hit it on one side, hit it on the other side. And that'll get it locked in place a little bit here. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our scissors and just kind of trim out the ends. Just make it a little bit shorter on each claw. And then we're going to go ahead and take our red sharpie. You can use uh, whatever color sharpie you like. If you want to put little blue tips on it, red tips, orange tips. Any of that will work, but all we're going to do is just put a little bit of red on each side, on each uh, tip of our claw. Put a little bit on one side, a little bit on this other side. Alright. So, it's important when you're using a Sharpie with this to let the marker go ahead and dry a little bit. So this is why I do it in this step. I'm going to go ahead and just try to trim some of this back hair off. Because that's just bulk that we don't need on our fly. And we'll just trim little bits off each end, a little bit off the top. Make it look just a little bit neater. If you want, you can taper it towards the end, make it really look like a blue crab's call where it goes from thinner to thick. Uh, it's a little bit what we did right here. It goes thinner and just gradually gets thicker towards the claw. Now the last thing we're going to do is just take our sculpt again. We're going to put it back right on the claw just like we did before on each side now that the uh, that red marker should have got in there a little better. We're just going to go ahead and rub that in with our fingers again. And again, get our UV light and hit it. Make sure it's good and hard in there. And it is. So now, now that claw is going to stay perfectly still. So when we put it on the crab, it'll always stay open. Uh, it'll be quite durable uh, for fishing. We'll go ahead and make uh, one more claw and then we'll uh, start tying up the pattern. All right, we're gonna continue with our uh, Kung Fu Crab. We already uh, just went over how to make our claws. So we got two claws made up. Next thing we're gonna do is we got our hook. This is a uh, Umqua 506 uh, jig hook. I'm using this hook just so I can get away with using a little bit of uh, lighter lead. Uh, just to be a little bit more uh, sneaky when throwing at permit or redfish up shallow. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start some blue thread here on the uh, front of the hook. Got access. We're going to use uh, small lead dumbbell eyes today. And this hook's a, uh, a size one, so I mean you could go with much 
heavier set of eyes, you can go with a lighter set of eyes, doesn't really matter. Just want to make sure it flips over and that you can make it as light as you need it or as heavy as you need it. So, all we're doing is just attaching the eyes like you've seen me do before, just typical cross wraps, figure eight wraps, and uh, helicopter wraps here. So, that's good and secure on there. We're going to go ahead and work our thread all the way to the back of the fly here. Back onto the bend. And work down the bend some. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to get our uh, our medium cactus chenille. You've seen me do this on a lot of other patterns too. All we're doing is just putting a uh, egg sack in on the fly. We'll cut out a little section here and just tie this on the back. All we'll do is just palmer this forward, trying to keep it in a little ball shape uh, just to represent that egg sac, give fish just a little difference of color to kind of key in on, make it just look a little bit more appealing to uh, whatever you're throwing at, bonefish, redfish, permit. So go ahead and palmer this in here. Every once in a while, you just kind of stroke it back just a little bit, get those fibers to lay back. As you move forward, you want to get it just to where that hook starts to uh, straighten out for you. I'll bring our thread back and uh, tie this in. You don't need it to look too pretty at this point. All of this is going to basically get covered up in the next couple of steps. So if you don't have the uh, cleanest tie-in right here, it's not going to not going to make a world of difference for you. So we'll clean it up just a little bit. Kind of tie over that and then tie back. So the next thing we're going to do is add some eyes. I have some uh, mono eyes here that I made myself. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of this uh, loon hardhead off the actual mono itself. Put my scissors there. Clean that up, make it a little, a little bit better. All we're going to do is just make this extend a little bit past our egg sac. And tie it in here on one side. tight thread wraps going so it stays in one spot and we'll do the same thing on the other side so we just got to clean this mono up a little too happens every once in a while you're dipping in this uh, loon hard head it gets on your mono just take your bad pair of scissors don't clamp down too hard and just kind of rub it and it'll take it off for the most part so we'll get it on this other side, line it up. Do the same thing tying it in. Look even. And we'll tie back on it. Make sure those are in nice and tight. So now we'll just go ahead and kind of separate the eyes from the uh, egg sac by just doing some wraps here on the inside. Just add maybe five or six wraps to the inside of each eye, just to kind of get them to pop out a little bit. Again, you've seen me do this on a lot of other patterns. Just so they're kind of spread and now they're even. So we're looking, looking pretty good there. All right. Cover up some more of that mono. All right, so now we can go ahead, we can take our uh, crab claws, we can tie those in. So I'm gonna take this first crab claw, here, this will be the far side of the hook. I just want the crab claw to kind of rest up against the uh, the eyes here. I don't want the uh, 
the hide to extend too far past the eyes or else you're going to get some uh, a lot of fouling around the eyes and around the hook so you kind of want these uh, claws stay where they're at So that's one claw in there. Kind of cut some of that excess out. Then we'll go ahead and add the other claw the same way on the other side. Kind of get it right up there on the uh, eye and tie in. This is why we kind of trimmed out some of that fur when I showed you how to make the uh, claws earlier. It's just so that this point, it's already bulky enough. We just don't want it to get even more bulky by having unnecessary uh, fur on those rabbit strips. So just get it nice and tight. That way these rabbit strips don't go anywhere on you. And we'll cut out that piece around it. Kind of clean it up just a little. All right, kind of even it up there. Now we're just going to take just a little bit of Loctite. If I have one that's not locked up on me. And they all seem to be. Just add a little to each side, a little on the bottom, a little on the top. That will kind of soak through your thread and get down. Make sure those rabbit strips don't move. Make sure those eyes don't move. So, lock, uh, lock tight some pretty good stuff for uh, making sure your fly is going to stay where the materials of your fly are going to stay where you want them to stay. So. Just a couple more thread wraps just to make sure that's really secure. So the next thing we're going to grab is our EP Foxy brush. This is a tan color, I believe. Yes, tan. Sometimes they do some weird color names. You always got to make sure you got the name right. So we're going to take our Foxy brush here. We're just going to trim out this little piece of wire at the end. We don't need that extra wire. All we're going to do is just tie this in right here in front of our claws. I'm putting that uh, glue on before that's going to help this brush kind of get tied in and stay on there a little better. But for the most part that's not ever really a worry. So, for the life of me, I don't know what I did with my hackle pliers, so we'll just do this one by hand. There's one tool I'm really good at losing, it's those hackle pliers. Alright, so. And that's why I hate doing it by hand. <laughs> the tool that helps you the most is the one you're definitely going to lose the most. Just want to kind of get this to cover up most of what you just did there. Looks pretty good. I think we did about five or six wraps. This uh, Foxy brush, you don't need too much of it. Just enough to kind of make the body all come together. So we'll tie this in here. That good and tight. We'll take our bad pair of scissors. We can cut out that wire. I'm going to take our Bach in and we'll just try to pick that out just a little bit. Yeah. I like this Foxy brush because some of those fibers kind of extend past the eyes. Give a little bit more of that buggy look. Yeah. We can wrap back on it a little bit here too. That's good. 
And now we're going to take a, uh, a hackle feather here off of our uh, saddle cape. Hopefully I can find a good feather today. This one's starting to uh, lose all of its good feathers, being that it's a uh, cheaper cape. But we can probably find something on here. Let's see. That feather will be fine. All we're going to do is just kind of take some of the ends of that feather off. And we're just going to tie it in right here in front of the uh, foxy brush. Um, again, we don't have our hackle pliers with us today, but we can just do this by hand. Luckily, this one's going in my box instead of a client's. I'll just keep going around, stroking back every time. It gives you just a little color difference in the body by adding this hackle feather. It's not a necessary step, but I always like it. Now we'll tie that in. Cut our excess feather out of there. And we get all of our feathers and kind of just stroke them back. And then we're going to wrap back up on them. build this body just a little bit we'll work forward with a thread once and work back just so that body's a little bit more even and we'll get ourselves all the way back so our feathers lay back nice and uh nice and straight there now it's starting to look a little bit more like a crab so now we're going to get our uh our congo hair this is a uh arctic blue i really like this color for making a uh a blue crab kind of fly. It's usually a pretty popular color for people to order as well. So take a nice uh, size chunk off here. And all we're really going to do with this is just make a, uh, a toad style body. So we'll fold it in half, cut it, take one of those halves. Cut that, and then we'll take that other half, and we'll cut that. So now we got four different pieces. Now uh, we might need four. Usually, I end up using about five pieces, but usually it just depends how much I grab off the uh, off the hank. There, it doesn't make much of a difference whether you do four or five, six. Just want to make sure you get nice tight wraps in here. I'm losing all my tools today. Where's my? Okay. All right. So you get a nice tight wraps to start. Going one way, fold it back, and get some wraps coming here the other way. Try not to trap too many of those feather fibers on this first step here. You're going to trap some more than likely as we did. If you did, you can just kind of cut out the ones that you uh, you trapped. You got plenty of them there. Right. So, now we'll just take our little uh, clothespin here. Ooh, got my thread mixed in there with it. Kind of move it back with our clothespin. We can see we kind of got some different fibers trapped. It's always this first one that gives me the most trouble. Then once you get going, kind of gets cleaner and cleaner. Now we'll just go ahead. We'll do another one the same way. 
four or five wraps going one way. Pull back on the far side and then four or five wraps going the other way. Couple wraps in front. And we'll just move our clothes pin once again. We'll just keep repeating this step until we get. Sorry about that. Battery uh, ran out on the uh, little camera there. Uh, pick up right where we left off. We're just uh, still making this toad body here. Just kind of clean it up in here just a little bit. So, again, we'll take our uh, pieces of Arctic Blue. Uh, I forget what this stuff's called, Congo hair. Brain fart there for a second. And a couple wraps one way. I'll fold it back on itself. And three or four wraps the other way. A couple wraps in front. Take our clothespin off. Again, just repeat the steps. Going all the way forward. Take our next clump here. And just keep doing the same thing. If you trap some fibers, it's not too big of a deal. We're going to clean all that up uh, afterwards. You just don't want to end up trapping too many. Or else it gets a little bit unruly on you. You can always come in here and just kind of trim some of this out just to get it out of your way. So we're just going to add. One more clump, so we'll just get a little bit more of the uh, Congo hair here. Let's take a little section this time. And we'll tie it in. Try not to trap too many of these fibers here at the front. Alright. That looks pretty good. Kind of jump our thread here just to get it out of the way. Now what we're going to do is just trim each side of this. So we're just going to try to stand it up on each side and get a nice little about 45 degree cut. You're probably not going to get both sides perfect, but as long as they're pretty close, that's good. You can make these as, as wide or as narrow as you really want. I like to make them a little bit more narrow. just to kind of give the crab a little bit better proportions. So, all right, now what do we need? We need some legs. And of course we can't find the legs at the moment. I know we got legs. Wrong legs. <laughs> So these are our uh, sight cast fishing uh, marsh legs. These are the uh, blue tips. So we're going to go ahead and turn our fly over here. And we're just going to take three of these legs sections off. We're going to tie these in right on the bottom of the fly. So fold it around our thread. We'll come right in here behind the eye. A couple tight wraps. Just tie these legs going kind of straight back. You're not really tying too much over the legs. Kind of split it so we got three on one side, three coming here on the other. 
kind of just like to split the wraps a little bit here. There. Now these legs aren't going anywhere on us. We'll just get them back towards the center again, kind of trim them just a little bit past where our uh, fox comes out to. So that should be good on the legs. And we'll just come back, clean our body up a little bit. You don't have to. I mean, you can let it look unruly. It's uh, it's just a crab body after all. They've got barnacles and stuff on them all the time. It doesn't have to be the most uh, neat looking body in the world. Give it a couple wraps here around the head. And then we'll just come back and whip finish here on the head. I just want to clean up this head just a little bit with my lighter. If it'll light, we got fluid. Yeah, we got fluid. All kind of tool problems today. All right, so we got all that. Now we're just going to take a little bit of this Deer Creek uh, Fine Flex. We're going to kind of spread our legs out just a little bit and we're going to get a little bit of this fine flex right over the legs and over our dumbbell eyes. I'll hold that down. And these legs should have a lot of movement on the bottom of this fly. So as you're stripping it, these things should be going kind of everywhere on the bottom side. And then we'll just get a little bit of this fine flex too here over the... Uh, Thread wraps on the eyes. Kind of make that just look a little bit neater. Give it a couple spins, just make sure that it evens out a little bit. Hit it with our light again. And that's basically it. That's our uh, Kung Fu Crab. That's ready to uh, go hit some good permit. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, please visit my website. You can buy uh, crabs just like this one on there. So, thanks for watching. Bye.